Live. Here. Live. But we don't have to necessarily know what that means. What's the someday of Black? I don't like, know that we want this story happens now. Ladies and gentlemen, the movie writes itself. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, well. I'm still streaming. How do I stop streaming? No! <laughs> I don't, I should know. I'm listening. What's the someday I'll blank? And I've got, I've no idea what we were talking about in that moment. And it's, a, it's our intro. I have no, I have no memory or concept of what I was at. It sounds great. It sounded good. Now I just go, I have no, I have zero. I honestly just looked for moments where you sounded good. And, and said, I, bet, I bet you were like, just truly through hours and hours <laughs> and hours of material. Being like, got to be some, got to be something in there where this guy sounds like he's vaguely smart. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy, what are we? It's Tuesday today. Happy Tuesday, Tuesday October 25th. October. And this is Ben and Jake write a movie. A ciao. And this is Ciao. Jacob Arabia. Ciao. Jacob Arabia. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Right. Got several um, options lined up. <laughs> I'm sure you've been spending like hours just thinking main, about what mainly your, how I spend my evenings. What your stream name is going to Indeed. be? My yeah. stream name. It's like your. It's like your Matrix name. <laughs> <laughs> your stream handle. Stream handle. There you go. I stream just created handle. a word. Stream um, handle. <laughs> All right. Well, so here we are. Yesterday, um, to catch some people up, uh, and I wrote it in the description, but basically we discovered that all the outline that we did in Act 1 sucks. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, we we started again from way. scratch. Watch uh, us live as we re-break a script. Watch us live as we literally crash and burn. Um, <laughs> no, what we discovered was actually that we... In talking about our protagonists yep. and wanting to make sure that we understood them a little bit better in Act mm -hmm. One, as well as liked at least Sam and Charlize yes. um, in Act One, we realized that that could be accomplished by restructuring some of the scenes that we already Yes. So, so we started that process of restructuring. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have to finish it so that we can just move forward. Yeah, absolutely. But again, it's interesting. This act one is when you are setting everything up. You're setting not only the tone of the move, movie, but also, you know, all our characters. And we reached this moment yesterday whereby we were going, how are we going to feel like we really care about Sam? Now I'm going to pause right. this conversation for one second. Yeah. Because did we want to talk anything? Did we want to talk anything else before we jump right into script work? I have a... I, I have a topic idea, but I wasn't you sure. You do. Great. Sure. Wonderful. I actually, I, I, I'm not coming with anything today. So Don't I'd worry. It's fine. It's fine. Is. So it's about um, the work of being an artist and finding that space in between things that you love and things that you're paid to do. <laughs> and at what point do they do this? You know, so for example, we had a meeting earlier with, right. a, with a producer who was presenting us with versions of IP. Go right. back and see our IP episode. Yes. Uh, uh, to see our... Yeah, it even cut it has its own 30-minute uh, little separate indeed. part where you can go indeed, back and indeed. watch that. And, you know, there were some things. You kind of go, oh, okay, here's a list of IP, you know. Um that ranged from toys to games and things like that. Sure, sure. And you go, well, okay. Do I love any of these? Maybe. Okay. Dunno. Is there a movie that I've wanted to write that I love the idea for? That if I did this and brought in this IP to this thing, could that be something that I really fell in love with? And again, the aspect of, of, of being this artist versus being a hired professional, especially in Hollywood, is this, is this line that we're always walking in. And it's constantly going to be um, uh, finding that balance of art and commerce. It's a phrase you hear, art, art and commerce. Yeah. And, I you know, that's... I think ultimately where you and I sit with things and we've asked ourselves this question a lot mm -hmm. is we go... Do you love this? Mm. It's a question mm. our manager asks us. Yeah. If we're 
talking about an idea. Right. He says, do you love this? And if the answer is no, unless you are really struggling financially, <laughs> mm-hmm. and that can be part of the equation because commerce is part of the equation. It is. Don't do it. If the answer is yeah. no, don't do it. And there's even an argument to be made for even if you even if you are struggling financially, still don't do it. Mm. Because mm. is your work gonna be the best work it can be? Well, let me ask you a question yeah. though. Yeah. Because sometimes your initial gut instinct might be to not love something. Correct. You believe that you can learn to love. Absolutely. And can you find a way in that you love? Because sometimes opportunities are presented that are really good opportunities. And sometimes those opportunities could lead in a commerce, in a business sense, to even bigger opportunities. And so the question I think that sometimes you have to ask yourself is, is there a way for me to love this? Mm. And genuinely, Mm. if the answer is no, there is literally no way I can enjoy writing this right now, then absolutely, I think you you have to pass. I always say um, that when I'm writing, I am watching the movie in my mind consistently. And if I can't enjoy watching that movie, movie. then I'm going to be so reluctant to write. And the yeah. that the, the that's where writer's block comes from in in many ways is that you're not excited to sit down yeah and do the I work. Now, that being said, we we had a movie a few years ago that we wrote that we did not love while we were writing it. We were we were pushed into a certain direction. Yeah, and at the end of it, it was a TV movie, and we were just like, yeah. and it doesn't read great, and I don't think it's it's far it's not from our, our best work. work. It's not our best work, although. I, you know, the concept was fun. Once you're in a job, and and this is something else that I think you have yeah. to take into consideration. There are times where you may think that you love something, and think that you are super excited, and then manage to get yourself hired on that thing, and then realize that you actually you fucking hate it. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, we almost and- had that, didn't we? We we fought to get. We fought to get attached to a particular property. Mm-hmm. We got there. We're like, we want the shiny toy. We want the shiny toy. We want the shiny toy. We got the shiny toy. We're like, I've actually no idea what the fuck to do with this. Right. <laughs> it wasn't I, quite exactly that. It was, no, oh, but, hang on a minute. This is more difficult. And can I fix this? I think that there has to be, look, you know, you read about and you'll hear about people who who do drop off projects for various reasons. Um, and I think there is a time yeah. when you need to, to think about the project. Yes. Um, and go, am I, am I doing this project a, a disservice yeah. by just trying to force myself to find a way through? Even if it's something um, wonderful. I think of Eric Heiserer and Sandman. Mm, Eric Heiser, mm. you know, writer of Arrival, was attached mm. to do Sandman for a long time. Right. And then very publicly said, you know what? I don't think I can do this justice. Yeah. I've tried and I can't do it. And yeah. props to him, because that was a big deal. Enormous property, beloved property. Sure. And when I, I'm, I'm trying and I can't figure out how to do it. And massive respect to do for doing that so publicly yeah yeah Yeah. no and and i think that you just have to i would love to love everything that we do from moment one yeah i don't think that it's um i don't think that it's realistic yes in both um the commerce aspect of screenwriting whereby Mm -hmm. you know Unfortunately, original material is much harder to sell and IP that you absolutely love is probably going to be very yeah. hard to become attached to. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, we have a very specific relationship whereby we are partners. And so, um, 
you know, there may be ideas and there have been ideas that you absolutely love and I don't and vice versa. Absolutely. Um, and you were talking so about one this morning. You were like, hey, I remember I pitched you this idea 12 years yeah. ago. And look, oh, look, it got made into a movie. And I was like, yeah. And, right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Reminds me of this. There was this tweet going around yesterday about a horror director whose movie is doing very well at the box office at the moment, who sent a tweet to all of the actors who said no to his movie saying, bet you wish you'd done my movie now. <laughs> and actually how shitty that was. But anyway. That's funny. Um, I'm not saying that you're shitty, Ben. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I do think that there is compromise. There is. The there is. There is. But there's a level that you have to um, find. I mean, there again, you, were, you started the conversation by saying, what is the balance between art and commerce? Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the answer is within the question, which is, it's a balance. Absolutely. Um, I think that to to be able, in as an artist, to be able to create art that I'm proud of, I do have to love it. And at the mm -hmm. same time, I have to consider commerce in order to being a working artist. Of course, absolutely. Um, it's interesting, so isn't it? Because finding I know that yeah, balance completely. It's interesting, isn't it? Because when when you're trying to break in, when we're trying to break in, you're really driven by the passion of your project. Mm -hmm. And you find the thing that you absolutely love because you and you and you work on it and you and you know and you know you gotta love it because you're working on it for free, essentially. It's no yeah. guarantee apparently. I guess it's the same when we're specking something. Yeah, sure. You know, right now. Um, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You have to be like, oh, I, I love this. Uh, yeah. and also where we are right now, a mind to it being commercial yeah and sellable yeah. Uh, uh, budgetarily and con conceptually mm -hmm. um but that's the thing that really fuels you when you're working on a on a on a spec project but when it comes to those moments yeah. of going hey this is going to be some free work up front mm -hmm. to develop an idea to get it ready in in pitch form and then to then if you get the job actually write it you know, yeah. and there's something to be said for, you know, I'll, I'll love anything for a million bucks. <laughs> and yeah, but I think the answer still. to that question is, can I love anything yeah. for a million bucks? I, I mean, like the reality is, I don't think, you know, there are definitely ideas out there and IP out there spinning around that I don't care how much you pay me. I'm not going to enjoy writing it. Yeah. Um, I may fight like hell to try and write it but am i doing my yeah am i doing my career a, a, a disservice you know someone uh once told us it was probably one of our reps probably our manager that you know the worst thing you can do is take a job and shit the bed absolutely and so absolutely no matter how much you're getting paid you got to be thinking about the next job. Our yeah. our dear friend um, um, and producer uh, Derek Colstead always always uh, talks about that with us. Is always thinking about the long game. Yeah. In our in our in, in, from a career standpoint, um, and I think there's very much something to be said about that. It's like if you're only thinking about the short game, you're you're not necessarily looking at the realities of being a screenwriter because the realities of being a screenwriter is you may not work for two years. You may, yeah. um, you, you need to be looking at where do you want your career to be in 10 years? It's yeah. about building this brand and this, and this company. I mean, it, there really is a, entrepreneurial nature to being a screenwriter and you can't forget that yeah. um but you know there's there it's it's worth saying that you know if you it's it's worse to shit the bed because then you won't get hired by that place again yeah and you, don't you know, may not get hired by that place yeah. again. And you don't know where that always, person is never, going never. where yeah, yeah never say never absolutely um and there are and here's the thing. 
We, I'm talking about the meeting we had this morning. We were approached by this producer seven or eight months ago about a video game. And we liked the, we, we liked the concept of the video game because it was loosely a, around an idea that we'd already been batting around. That we'd had struggles with and chosen not to spec, but there was something there that we responded to. And when this video game landed on our desk, it was like, oh, wow, we can just do that idea with this. And we fought to get to get the job. Again, it wasn't quote unquote a job, but it was we fought to make the attachment to this IP. Mm-hmm. And um, and then when we got it, we came across the same problems we had when we were thinking about specking it. Yeah. And while yeah. there was a, a video game franchise that's n- known but not massively well known, it was yeah. known enough. We just went. Oh, we couldn't find man. our way in. We couldn't find the right way to do it. Yeah, no, it's. it's and in that particular example, and it was really interesting. We called the producer first of all. We called our agents and our manager and said, "Hey, we're struggling with this." And they were like, "Do what you got to do. If you, you know, not great, but anyway." And they're like, "Do you want us to do it, or do you want to do it?" And we decided to do it. We called up the producer and we said, "Hey." We're really struggling with this. We don't think we're the right people. We don't want to mess you around by saying, oh, yeah, we're working on it and it not coming. Yeah. We'd rather just have a clean. Anyway, point being, f- five months later, they gave us a call and they're throwing other, and throwing other things our way. I, yeah, because I mean, honestly, have, it's, you know? it is definitely the best, the best policy. Yeah. We have a question, actually, from um, question? Analog Man. Ah. What produced movie would you guys have fought tooth and nail for to be writers on it's interesting well um produced movie is is a good question because there's that's i'm trying to think if we fought for any fought on always this produced movies yeah i mean you know we we did fight tooth and nail to to be the writers on a movie that has yet to be produced um based on the highlander franchise we put together a we massive did. take. Got all we the put way together a take for the hi- for the new Highlander trilogy. Yeah, we came up with three, three movies. movies worth of stuff yeah. over our Christmas break in 27, 8, 27. Christmas New Year's. Yeah, it was. We had it, something, something like, like that. that. We 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 had no choice because they were. They were moving they fast. Were moving quickly, and they were they were out to a bunch of people, and we actually asked to be considered, and they yep. gave us the opportunity. We managed to get down to the very very last round. We were the only writers that Chad Stahelski, the director, was like still meeting with, and it went. The yeah. meeting went really well. It went well. And at the end, we said then... like, "Come back in a couple of weeks. Let's talk through some of these ideas." Some more, kind of throw some ideas towards you. And And then then he uh, changed his mind on the direction he wanted to go. And that's what happens. Um, I mean, we we love that IP. It's very beloved to us. Again, it just fits in our our wheelhouse. It's world building. It's modern day swords. You know, it's a bit of magic. It was great. Um, But produced movies, I mean... It's difficult to say because it because it's going. Sure it's well, would you like like you like what wanted. like what worlds would I want to live in? Yeah. I'd love to play in a Star Wars world. I'd love to yeah. play in a Marvel world, um, because I like I like though I like those things. Um, I'd love there to be a Warhammer movie or a Warhammer project because I'm a massive Warhammer fan. I'd love to do stuff in that mm. world. Um, um, I'd love to be. Yeah, I mean that's just universe. like a list of like everything that we everything like that you like pop culture. I mean, I, I think know? it's. It, I think the question is interesting and also I think difficult to answer because yeah. when something's already been produced, it's hard you to go, say. Yeah. Oh, I wish I'd written that. Oh, I wish I'd written that. And exactly. then it wouldn't be that. Right. <laughs> right. You know, and I might love that just the way it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So but, it's tough. But yeah, I mean, I think um, we haven't been, I think at, at this stage, the the level of IP that we've been offered has been, I would say, um, other than just a, other than a couple of properties that were very, very high level final fantasy. Yeah. We worked our butt off to get, but it wasn't, I mean, again, it didn't get produced. Yeah. Um, Highlander, but, but we haven't, I don't think been approached about franchise uh, IP properties that we would necessarily like, 
jump into a um uh what do they call it? Like a jump ball type situation. Um, right. Most of the times, if they're bake offs, which is another way that they call these things, where there's like these places go out to like, you know, 20 writers, 30 writers, yeah. Yeah. most bake offs we pass on. Um, unless, I think partly because we're more passionate about our own stuff. Yeah. And unless not... it's we love this and we have to, and we have to do this. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm trying to think of like other than Highlander and, you know, I mean, Final Fantasy, it wasn't even a bake-off no, when, we when we were approached. Yeah. But, like, other than Highlander, have we really fought in any other bake-offs? Like, I feel like we pass on most of them because it's yeah, just... We, we there talk haven't about, been yeah. any. I mean, I it's part of the art and commerce that you're talking about. There's yeah. a lot of work that goes into putting a pitch together. Completely. And when you're going up against... I mean, we knew we were going to be going up against the whole town when it came to pitching our take on the Lord of the Rings show. Mm. We knew that. Okay, Lord of the Rings, yes. But that yep. was hardly a full pitch. But yes. No, it wasn't. But we, it was a it was, We were it was in like a round one minute pitch. of that, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and here's the thing. If if Amazon came out and said, we're going to do a new show, we don't know what it is, come to us with ideas, I'd do it again. I would do it oh, again. For I'd Lord do of the that Rings. again. Yeah, yeah. And so knowingly that everyone else is going to be coming up with another show as well. Of course. Absolutely sure. right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Lord of the Rings would yeah, be yeah. one. Absolutely. Yeah. We yeah, yeah. throw our hat in, in that ring. Uh, yeah. Then there are other there are other IPs. Look, if someone said we need a writer on a Batman movie, I'd be like, what do I have to do? Who do I? Well, have it was to interesting. We were we yeah, we were playing earlier um, on this year with a DC property. We can't talk about because we're under an NDA, but yeah. uh, that was interesting for two months. To be like, oh, yeah. we'd be playing in this world. Right. That would be happen. fun. But it wasn't, again, it wasn't like we didn't fight too. Yeah, like it wasn't that. like, oh, yeah. this is the one. I've always wanted to do this person in the DC. Right. Like, oh, right. I actually didn't know about them. Let me find out more about yeah. them. You know, and it was you fun. And I, I wish we, I, w- I do wish we had the opportunity to fully go there with I it. Know. But obviously Warner Brothers. It's a good take. But things happen in this. It so did. Warner Brothers imploded. So, um, Tyler. Anyway. Asks. Let's, I'll see if I can show this one up oh, here. One. Um, when you say you're offered IP, is there an expectation of free work, or is there money on the table? And more general question: How much free work do you guys do currently? Okay. Yeah, great so question. Offered versus. Okay, okay so, so here's the deal. So, yeah. So, <laughs> well, here's an ex- so here's an example. Today, a producer came to us and said, "Hey, we've had conversations with this studio. They've got connection to this." line of ip let's say it might have been a toy line or a game line for example might have been and um and we 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 literally we get uh, there's you know six things on this list and we might go you know what we really we really we may do we really like this game we really like this book we really like this character and then at that point we would start to develop a tape with this producer and then we may take that to the studio IP owner. So it's generally, and again, that's that's not an open writing assignment. That's a producer no. with a link to intellectual property. And then there's, yeah, I mean, there. to answer your question very straightforward, we are not at a place where uh, in our career we get offered paid gigs without having to do any work up front like right. that doesn't happen yeah um i would love it to one day hey if anyone Do out there is happening like to, to even... offer us it actually did happen one time but it was a very 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 specific situation right um and it was on um thunder agents which is a publicly we, we there were yes. about it and we were actually offered that job um, and it was IP, right. and there was money involved. We yeah. had to do a little free work, uh, just a little bit, because they needed to know the direction that we were going, but we had already worked on that IP previously. So it was a little bit different yes. um, in, in terms of that. Since that, we have never been actually directly offered money before having to put together a take. Yeah. I don't know that anyone I was going to say, I don't know that anyone is. I'm not just going to go like, hey, We'll give this to you just because we know you'll do awesome. With it. But I might be wrong. I, I might, might be wrong, wrong too. I, yeah. I don't know. I haven't heard of that. I mean, I know that people are on the top of lists. I, that sure. lists do exist. And and I know that someone might be an approved writer at a studio that they could 
there might be an incoming call saying, we have a job and we want you. Would you be interested? Totally. They might then say yes, but I can't imagine that they would then pay them before even yeah. having them they say, to come well, in at least have... what I would do. Yeah, it's not going to be yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely. Um, I don't think there's anyone who just automatically gets the job at the moment, even even... A, even a list writers like i can't imagine that like you you walk in and you just get the job without even an initial conversation whereby you've put yeah. together your thoughts yeah. and feelings and vision yeah. and everything else yeah. i mean here's the thing our industry is about um far more than just uh just working it's about presenting. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, and so like in you know, something we discovered very, very quickly after writing and selling Winter's Night, which was our first spec, we wrote, 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 wrote and sold. And then we realized, oh, actually, in order to get more work, you actually have to do more free work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't just start yeah. coming your way. The question um, then, the second part of the question is, how much free work do we currently do? A shit ton. So a shit ton. <laughs> and you, and you, and unfortunately, not unfortunately, but I think it's just part of it's part of being a professional writer. Yeah. You have to have. We have multiple spinning plates at the moment, about and. 10. Yes, about 10 spinning plates. We are currently working in some way on 10 different projects. Now, that's not to say we're actively writing 10 different projects. No. We're not. But, but we've, we've done done free work on all of them. Free work on every single one of them. <laughs> and here's the thing. If only one of those goes, you go, okay. But you don't know which one of them is going to go. Yeah. It could be our TV series. It could be the spec script we wrote last year. It could be this TV series that we're we're doing another thing with. Could you know, be this movie right here. This movie right here. Yeah. You know, you are always going to be doing some kind of speculative work. So if you're brought an IP and you say it's a book, we're meeting with five writers. Do you want to put a take together? And you love the book. You know, you go, yeah. You know what? I'll put a take together, and you'll spend X amount of time doing that doing that work, putting that take together, reading the book or listening to the book if you're an audiobook fan and yes. putting something together, you know? I mean, and that I would say for every, I mean, there, and, and there's a difference between our original stuff and how much free time we'll put into original stuff yeah. versus how much free time we'll put into a oh, yeah. uh, open assignment or something yeah. that people bring to us. Um, uh, again, art versus commerce. Um, if it's something that we've come up with ourselves, then it, we have a true artistic passion for it. And we'll put in as much, we're betting on us and we'll put yes. in as much free time as we have to. Absolutely. Um, if it's something that someone's approached us about it, then we'll kind of determine if we, if we do believe that we could love it, if it went in the direction that we love it, Yeah. which usually means, okay, if you want to do it our way, we'll yeah. do this. And yeah. we have to determine how much time are we willing to put into that because maybe that's a real long shot. Yeah. Um, you know, we went out for an open writing assignment not that long ago. We knew that our swing was really big. Because it was um, our version of this movie. But it was our version. And and but in order to do that, we had to read that the the script that was already written. We had to develop um you know, between ourselves, what the movie might be, which took hours and hours of conversation. And then we had to develop enough of a, of a take. And this was like the smallest amount because we knew they were out to a lot of other writers. Yeah. And so we were like, if we're going to get this, it's going to be our version and, and it's not what they have already. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll do, we'll do what we, what we can do. We went to the producer and we, and we had enough to tell him what our version of the movie would be. Yeah. And he was like, okay, I, I totally get it. I see what you want to do. Let me go back to the studio and see if they'd be open to it before yeah. you put any more hours into yeah. it. Yeah. And the studio said no. Yeah. Um, and so all of those hours, probably I'd say we put in whew, 10 plus hours, yeah. if not 15 yeah. um, on that. Those just poof, gone. Right. Now, maybe one of the ideas we came up with will come back one other day and totally. we'll like it totally. and we'll use it. Yeah. I don't know on that one. Um, but and yeah. just to say about where Hollywood is right now, the IP for that was a well-known restaurant chain. 
<laughs> Moving right along. Let's yeah. go ahead and do some more work on Oscar. I think it was a good little conversation then about. Yeah, no, thanks for the questions, guys. Um, guys or girls or anyone. People. Um, People. You know, um, love that. So thanks for the engagement. It's really, uh, it's really great. It is. Um, it so is really let's great. continue with our script that we still yes. have no name for. <laughs> One of these days, we're just going to have to sit here silently, silently. come up with a title. And people can watch. Name. Yeah, or again, or, or is it one of those things where we just each yeah. come with a list of names and, and words, you know, and just put them together and, you know. Probably, yeah. yeah. Probably, probably. Yeah. Uh, I'll just probably. do the boilerplate stuff real quickly. Well, yeah, Ben, yeah. document. Uh, yeah. We are Lustig Thornton on Facebook. If you're not on our Facebook page, go and join us over right. there. Um, we are, I'm at, at Jake Thornton on Twitter. Ben is at Ben underscore Lustig on Twitter as well. Uh, so please go and follow us over there uh, if you so choose. If you don't subscribe already to the YouTube channel, please go ahead and do that. I'm trying to get as many subscribers as possible to keep help with the visibility of getting this out there to the world so that people can watch how we write movies. Yeah. And they may think that it's completely wrong, and that's they, okay. They probably will. They probably do. Like, okay. hey, how, how not to write a movie with how Ben How not to write a movie with Ben and <laughs> <laughs> So well. yesterday we had an interesting moment. We had a moment where, as you were just discussing at the, at the top of the episode, whereby we went, oh, we began to talk about the introduction of our, of our regular, not a regular character, regular human character, but our, what is, what, essentially what is our stakes character, this character yeah. is Sam. And uh, currently we've, we've constructed her as being um, an addict. She's a drug user. Um, and we were, what, we were concerned that there was going to be moments of, of are we really going to care about this person, if they are in a negative space, how can we make this person, what can we go, oh, yes, I can see you're making, you're making the wrong choices in life, but I'm gonna, I, I care about you. Mm. And ultimately what we decided to do, what it led to us going, well, perhaps she should be going to see her sponsor. Um, and I have an idea on that, um, but keep going. So. Yeah, I'll keep going for a second. Um, then we realized, though, that if that, that we wanted her to have this moment where she failed and fell back into her, her disease of addiction um, for a moment, and that it was going to be that that was going to start this series of events whereby evil was going to manifest in her body and she's going to become the Antichrist. Not that, all ha not that that happens to all drug users by any means. Um, no. So then we realized that the things were in the wrong order. Yes. And so we went, well, what if we actually front load Sam? So we, it began a kind of series of events of us realizing, oh, actually, well, we're going to start with this prologue of Charlize Theron in the, in the beginning in 1920s New York. We then are going to jump modern day and meet Sam, first of all, then go back to Charlize and go, oh, OK, somehow she's alive mm -hmm. and she looks exactly the same. What's going on here? That's right. You know, so anyway, yes. Anyway, yeah. you were talking about when I mentioned sponsor, do you have thoughts? Yes. Um, rather than sponsor, I think I would rather it be her court appointed um, uh, either like social worker or um, uh, there's probably something that is a, you know, a, a court appointed um, drug counselor. Okay. Something like that. And the reason for that is one, I'd like to know that she's been in trouble with the law specifically. And there's a, that's a really easy way to know without even necessarily needing to do much to, to know. Um, the essence of the scene is exactly the same. Um, it's just about who she's talking to. It also makes the coffee shop versus diner problem go away. Um, and then we can still have her kind of being somewhat sh afraid of the police when they knock on the door because there are drugs in the apartment and clearly she has gotten into trouble in the law because of drugs. Here would be my argument against it. It comes down to... How could there possibly be an argument? <laughs> <laughs> it comes down to her agency. Um, mm -hmm. If it's a court-appointed drug person, this is something that she has to do because it's court-appointed. But she is if it... trying to do it. Say again? But she is trying to do it. The point of the conversation that she's in is her saying, I am getting better. I am doing, I am following the rules. And even the person that she's talking to can be like, you know, I'm really proud of you. Like this is, you've come a long way. 
you know, I'm going to put in a good solid recommendation for you or something like that. There's no, there's nothing about that that says you can't still have her actively wanting to get better. No, of course. I, I mean, I, I think that works either way. I just kind of feel like if it's court appointed, it, it takes away the, you know, like if she didn't go, mm -hmm. she'd be in trouble. But sure. if she didn't go to her sponsor, she'd be in personal trouble with herself. She wasn't be, wouldn't be holding herself accountable. But it's not um, about the sponsor, is it? It's about the drug use. I I agree. I agree. So um, it, it, going to the sponsor or going to the court appointed um, counselor, neither one are really the the core of what she's yeah. taking agency over. She's taking agency over being sober. Yeah. Um, I don't prefer it over the sponsor. I feel like it's an adjacent move. If you prefer it, I'm fine to go with it. Um, How can we... Here's, here's why I don't think it's adjacent, but maybe there's a way to, to meet in the middle, although I don't know what that is. I don't know from this, other than the fact that she's a druggie, that she has had any other issues in her life whatsoever. I don't get from this that she... Um, has had issues with the law or that she's um, any, anything. I don't know what her other, you know, oh, okay, she's a person who did drugs and has a sponsor. That's everybody. I mean, like, there's tons of people. Yeah, I'm not going right? <laughs> Not everybody. Not yeah, everybody. You know yeah, what I mean? It's I like, mean. that is not an uncommon thing, mm. is my point. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, sure, we could talk about her past in that, but then I go, is that then it's just through exposition more so mm -hmm. than and and non not necessarily as organic in this I'm meeting up with my sponsor and I'm just going to happen to bring up my past misdemeanor charges <laughs> you know <laughs> like yeah um, I'm sure and I do if it hadn't have been for that drug bust that I did all those years ago I right. wouldn't have been in trouble with the law right right you know like and and I like the moment where she is like fuck and jumps out the window and goes down the fire escape and ends up getting cornered by the cops. I still think that works. I, th I still think it's fun. Um, and so I feel like I want to believe it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You yeah. know, if you think it's adjacent, then there shouldn't be any argument against it. <laughs> <laughs> if it's really adjacent, right? Yeah, no, yeah, t yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, again, like I said, I think, I think what I, I think what I like about it, if it's the sponsor, is I go, oh, you really are, you really are taking initiative because you are attending NA meetings and you're meeting with your sponsor. But let's Rather be clear that, about who she is. She's about to be the Antichrist. She's not. A saint who's right, who started I, over again. But I want to right? see her fail at being good. Whereas if I just kind of feel like she's going to a court appointed place because she has to go to a court appointed place, she's supposed to be here at 10 a.m. on Thursday morning because right. that's what the court has said. She's just doing it to avoid punishment versus... I don't. Versus, I am actively making a choice to go and see my sponsor because I want to get well. I... That's not to say that we that she isn't going to go and do it, but I just feel like it's cleaner to be able to say, I'm going to my sponsor because I want to get well. It all depends on how those scenes are written. Sure. I mean, I think that those are, uh, those are assumptions that aren't necessarily true based on how you write the scene. Sure. If you show that she's shown up and that she's there with every good intention and that she's been trying and that she's working and that she doesn't, it doesn't have to be, ah, I'm fucking here yeah. just because you're making me be here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I agree. I think, you know, and, and, and the way you pitched out this counselor character, I think they should have a good, like you said, I think they should have a good relationship. Yeah. You know, I think we are establishing a sincere desire to change and grow. I think and, that it yeah. establishes the fact that she's, I, I think we can establish that, that she's on probation sure. in a way that feels organic to mm. why, what this scene is I'm without good. just having to say, Oh, I'm still on probation. Yeah, sure. You know, course. no, I mean, I hear that. I do hear that. Okay, and this character fine. isn't going to, 
re-enter the movie. She's in it once. I go. That's what this is. Right. Yeah, totally right. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. So it's this is going to be. It would just. It's literally counselor's office. Counselor's yeah. office. Count. Counts. Counselor. Counselor's office. Um, and with her, um, courts appointed. Um, counselor. Um, she's on probation. Um, and we'll have to do a little bit of research to see if that's even something, but I think that yeah, it, sure. I mean, it, yeah, it could yeah, be yeah. a social worker, sure. um, but regardless, um, it's not just a probation officer. Yeah. I think it's someone specific to the fact someone that she has a drug her, problem. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, you know, um, then we're outside and this isn't, you know, um, this wouldn't be just Sam exits the building when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just having a little look right now. Um, there are, there is, there is court ordered treatment. Yeah. Um, they generally are group counseling, but no one's going to be saying, "Hang on a minute." Yeah, group no. Group counseling totally. things. Yeah, I mean, I've seen yeah. at least in fictional things where a judge yeah. says you need to go and see this person for six months as part of yeah, your yeah, 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 yeah. part of your probation you know yeah. outpatient programs outpatient programs include both group and individual counseling court ordered outpatient treatment programs provide a more in-depth level of care in many cases an intensive outpatient program may be required iop consists of attending group counseling every day in time traditional individual counseling and psychiatric services so Cool. There we go. So that's literally the only change that 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 I wanted to make to that. So great, great. Um, then, then we're going to, uh, to Charlize, right. Charlize, 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 and then the note that we made, which yeah. I will read, is from Charlize. We then intercut between Sam finding out about her family, then mm -hmm. back to Charlize in her lonely life, and then. Back to Sam scoring heroin, shooting yes. up, and then smash to Charlize because she feels this blast of blast of energy and passes out. So yeah, yeah. it's not going to go from Charlize's home here. We're actually going to go. I'm going to delete this note because yeah. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we're actually going to go back to Sam uh -huh. first. Yes, there's a knock on the door. This whole thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. Then, so we're going to go here. Mm -hmm. Charlize on the diner, ba da ba da ba. We're gonna go there, yeah. and um, Sam's apartment building. Okay, so um, yeah, so we go to yes. I'm trying to do this for our audio listeners. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Um, if you so basically, we're just looking at the different places in the script, and we're. We're placing the Sam's apartment building scene where she is going to jump out of the window and climb down the fire escape and then yep. learn about her family dying Yep. in the middle of the two Charlize moments. So then we're going to cut back to Charlize and instead of um, going here, I'm just going to take this. Yep. So in the Charlize is home, right where she's at yes. home. Yes. So Charlize comes home now and she goes to take a bath. And while she's in the bath, we're not going to go quite yet because now we're going to go to exterior. Should It should be like Portland Alley or something. Or, sure. or is it just her yeah. boyfriend? Is it just the moment where her boyfriend consoles her? Yeah, maybe it's just, yeah, don't go out of the location. Stay in there. We can go. Where Where is that moment? Here it is. Yes. Um, so Sam's apartment night. Boyfriend tries to control, uh, console Sam by prepping a needle, and they and they and they shoot up. We see up. that our young woman, who's been struggling with her own addiction, has relapsed. Has relapsed. And then we go just, smash cut. Wait, 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 wait. Just underneath that, it says, and just oh no, sorry, that is the Charlize moment. Uh, it's interesting. Correct. And they shoot interior. up together. Smash cut to interior. Now we've got some day and night disparity here at the moment because Sam's apartment day. Charlie's bathroom night. It's happening at the same time. Really nice. That's yeah. fine. Yes. Although, you know what's really funny? I'll make a comment about day and night that I, I just noticed because I was watching an episode of television. I was watching The Rings of Power, which, by the way, I actually really like. Mm -hmm. um, but there's this sequence in one of the best episodes whereby um, we're in a village and it's nighttime. 
And then we see people galloping towards the village and it's daytime. And then we're back in the village and it's nighttime. And then we're with the people galloping and they're like, we're not far, but it's still daytime. <laughs> Was that the way that it happened? Yeah. It's funny. It's not the way I remember it at all, but yeah, interesting. How do you remember it? Well, I remember them galloping during the day and then night falling and then them arriving at night. They, they basically, they're like nightfall, night's falling. We're almost there. Right. But we've already been at night because uh, we've already been in the village and it's already been night. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah, but it's happen happen it happens all the time where I go, I don't know if we're jumping, like, we, like time in, mo we always, we say it's movie time or TV mm -hmm. time because... Mm -hmm. A lot of times, time makes no sense in these things. And you go, what's the emotional thing? Well, in this moment, we want to see the heroes rushing towards the town. And it looks much more beautiful with the scenery behind them. Because if it was night, we wouldn't be, get to see the mountains. Mm. <laughs> you know? Um, so. Yeah. Um, but in this particular moment, I do think that it's important that it's happening and feeling like it's happening really simultaneously. These the, these events are absolutely happening at the same time, you know. Um, it is happening at a, at a, exactly the same time. Yes. And while now, Charlie should might we be see some time, kind of energy be released from her when that happens? Could could we have maybe? almost like a red ripple of some kind of energy? Like Why are we the audience seeing it and no one else is? Is my question. Um, because. <laughs> because. Um, I don't know. Why can we see like spidey senses sometimes and no one else? Because we're experiencing that through Peter. Mm -hmm. You're experiencing that through the main character. Time feels like it's slowing down, and I'm aware that someone over there is about to throw a punch at me. Right. Um, that's why you do that. Um, I, just, I hear I'm your instinct, though, as trying well. Trying to do something visual that makes it very clear that this moment of the needle is the thing that causes. Okay, yeah. yeah if there really were really a shockwave that. ripple that no one reacts or responds to, I know that no one else is reacting or responding to it in the scene. I know that right. Sam is not aware of it. I know that her boyfriend... You also cut out and see that this ripple... See it ripple across, across, yes. across the whole city. And then I'm, when we're in the bathtub, boom, the ripple hits her. Yeah, sure. And she fine. does experience it. Yeah, fine. Okay. You know. Great. Sure. Um, yes. shoot a up ripple, a ripple of energy, unseen by uh, everyone. Sam unseen by everyone. Gets high. Yeah. Um, yeah. A shock wave of energy, or of energy, um, mm -hmm. uh, unseen by everyone. Yep. Yeah. Ripples out of her exterior. So instead of a smash cut, we would now it, it actually is better because we'll we'll see what's actually going on. Exterior Portland. Portland. Uh, night. Um, the shockwave um travels in all directions. Yes, absolutely. Then right. we're going yes. into Charlie's home. As right. she closes her eyes to relax, boom, the shockwave, the 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 energy shockwave hits her. Yeah, sure. We're gonna rewrite this anyway. Shock. Yeah, yeah. I still like. I still like that she has this experience of stumbling at the bar from blacking. I out. do. Yeah. Quite yeah. Good. yeah, yeah. I cool. All right. Great. Okay. So then we're so gonna cut to this yeah. moment. We are going to cut away to our Hank character. Some of the work that we did last week. He's in his supermarket. He finishes work. He goes home. He goes down to the backyard. Goes into his fallout shelter filled with gizmos and gadgets and all kinds of stuff and sees. Holy shit! Something's happened in Portland. This Actually, is big. This helps. Oh, it does. This moment. Yes, it does. The shockwave. Yes. Now yeah. I understand what yeah. he's tracking. Sure, tracking something, or there's some, yeah, some whatever kind of that. energy yeah. that was. Yeah, it's absolutely good. right. Completely. He goes to his. He goes to his gun closet. Takes out a bunch of guns and an ancient blade. Gets in his car and fucking drives off. And you so, know, there we go. Cool about this. 
I genuinely think Hank is actually kind of an antagonist right now. Yes, I agree. And I like that. I do too. If it's like Woody Harrelson or David Harbour or someone totally. who's like Absolutely a bit right. of a grizzledness to them. You David know? Harbour's a great idea, actually. I, lo I, love, I love that. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. And he's totally like, David Harbour. Yeah, he's totally yeah. David Harbour. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's really great. Yeah. Cool. I'll give him a call. Hey, David. It's Don't Jake. Give David a call. No, we haven't met. <laughs> All right. So, what's that? I said, give David a call. So, um, yeah, he yeah. drives out. Now, the next morning, we're saying we're going to cut back to Charlize. We are going to cut back to Charlize. Wars. Yes. She's going to wake up on the floor of her fucking bathroom. Absolutely right. right? Yeah, completely. It's Interior. had a big, big effect on her. Question. Yes. Maybe there's not an answer. I think it's okay if there's not, but I'm just asking. Is it knocked every demon out? <laughs> How many demons like Charlene? No, I mean, she's going to go out down to the supermarket and find someone, isn't she? Yeah. Or maybe they've just arrived. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't... Again, like I said, I don't, I'm, not sure how, I'm not sure how much it matters. But here's the thing. It's what makes all the demons know that, that it's time. Time has come. The Dark One is ascendant. So yes. it's enough power that maybe it does maybe it doesn't i don't yeah. know if you're on the earthly plane maybe it hits you she was she's surprised by it she's literally yeah, trying she to relax in the bathroom great i don't, I don't know, know. What the time point is she's just, just drunk off the wine it's different I, whiskey she's a whiskey drinker man come on be but, but i think the the idea is she gets hit with this she doesn't she didn't know 100 percent what it was she didn't see the shock wave either no only, she didn't only we did yeah yeah but she has heard of the legend of when the Antichrist comes of yeah. what would happen. Right. Right. Something like that. Yeah. I guess. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Or or is this here's another question, I guess, but maybe you're right. Maybe it maybe it okay, yeah, 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 yeah. um we see David Harbour with the Ghostbuster shit tracking weird anomalies around the globe because we talked about there there when like the portals open up and the yeah, demons sure. cross over yeah um and and so demonic energy it's basically he's tr tracking demonic energy right sure. yeah um her becoming the antichrist we've talked about this her becoming the antichrist will create so much demonic energy that she'll be able to open a large enough portal that mm -hmm. everyone from hell can come through right sure. it usually takes an enormous amount of energy to open these portals which is why david harbour can trace uh, that demonic energy yeah, right? sure. even possessions would take a certain level of demonic energy mm -hmm. to have even the demon spirit take over somebody else's mm -hmm. body mm -hmm. so that would be releasing demonic energy sure this particular amount of demonic energy that just happened because of the Antichrist would be significantly bigger than all yeah. of those things. Yeah. What David Harbour could have seen, in theory, would have been the, the blowing up um, of the bridge in that sense. But what she felt right now, in all, what I'm saying is there's different levels, mm -hmm. okay? So, like, and again, no one's asking this, and we're never no one's asking it, this, I don't, yeah, ever, I don't ever, know. ever. Yeah, but the point is, what Charlize just, and this is why it's only slightly important, what Charlize just felt is different, it's different than what she's ever felt before, mm. and that's important because she's going, yeah. What the fuck yeah. was that? I think any viewer watching this movie is going to think that David Harbour is tracking the shockwave energy that we just saw. Sure. Two two scenes two scenes ago. So again, I, again, I think you're right. I don't know if anyone's going into these details or asking these. They're questions. not in this kind of movie. No, they're not. Sure. Um, okay. But I do so, think that Charlize is going. So she uh, wakes up. She's like something big and bad happened last night. Now she saw on TV Portland Bridge blow up, but that's not when the shockwave hit her. It hit, yeah. hit her later on that evening. She doesn't know. If these two, I, if these two things are linked at all, and I don't think she's running off to Portland right now because because of that, you know. That's but why I do, she's yeah. gonna, that's why she needs the run in with the demon. Yes, that's right. Yes. Now here's a question um, that I just wanna because at this moment it feels it feels like there's an opportunity for us to identify what she is. Yes. In a clear way. In this scene, there is. 
Correct. So she with just the demon. Oh yeah, it, with the de- I'm, I'm actually still back in the bathroom, but okay. um, we have this reflection on the in the water in the previous. Um, in, in Does the she have house. no mirrors in her house? That's interesting. But in the would there if we already had one reflection in water, would we have another reflection in water? I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing that I would say is. Um, if she sees herself in a reflection, can we see her distaste for herself? I mean, yeah. her journey, as we as we've talked about it, and I want to make sure we establish it clearly in this okay. act one, yeah. okay. is that uh-huh. she hates what she is. Okay, I've got an idea. Okay. She wakes up in the morning. She's hot herself. She's got a fucking bruise on her head, lump on her head, whatever. She goes to Walgreens. Mm-hmm. And in Walgreens, she sees another demon. Demon sees her for what she is. She sees the demon for what it is. Does something with the demon. We're going, huh, what's going on? Maybe he references her as, oh, you're one of that, you're, you're that person, whatever, whatever. As she leaves, she goes past like, the fucking sunglasses stand and sees clearly in the reflection of the mirror herself in true demonic form. We've had it mentioned then in dialogue by demon that she's just fought in Walgreens. And then she sees herself in this mirror in Walgreens. Sure, Somebody... I mean, we could actually just do POVs also and see what they see. Oh, yes, totally. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Well, I yeah. don't think we've really decided on what that is. Yeah, we talked different versions, didn't we? We talked what's the way to present a demon that we haven't seen before, you know? Um, um, yeah, I'm still not clear. I'm it. still not 100% clear. I don't feel like going grizzly monster. No, I don't either. But I think it's got to be some it's got to be something and i think it should be something creepy you know creepy um, yes creep creepy yes monster to a certain degree but not grisly and gross. yeah okay so when they when when they see each other when they see each other are they completely bald with pale white skin weird eyes and jaggedy teeth or, or completely black eyes Something like that. Like that's what they look like to each other. That's what she looks like in the mirror. Something like that. Did I just kind of throw that out? Maybe, maybe. I'm not. I'm not opposed to it. I'm just trying to think if that's because uh, I'm. Tr- I'm trying to imagine this moment, even in the earlier one where we get this quick glimpse where we don't even know what it is. In fact, yeah. I want to specify that what we see in that is such a quick glimpse that we don't even really know what we've seen. Yeah, in that openings, totally. in that in that totally. opening, I'm just gonna th- you know because I was, I- yeah, totally. I just saw I just saw something else in my mind, mm-hmm. which was I always fucking loved the way that Darth Maul looked. Darth Maul looked fucking cool. He did look really cool. Now, obviously, he had little horns on his head. I don't think we necessarily need that, but there was something about the fact that his skin and his skin was kind of tattooed with this ritualistic thing, and it was black and red. And not necessarily in saying it needs to be black and red, but is there something about mm. like if you were to say and they all look, look kind of like Darth Maul, I'd be like, oh, that's cool, that's really sure. neat. I've never seen oh the demons of hell look like this. You know, if they were covered from head to toe in weird, Dark, like weird tattoos, tattoos, red and black tattoos, and you know, and like... something weird with their eyes, I'd be like, oh, cool, that's a kind of demon. I don't feel like I've seen before. Okay. Something like, again, just pop it into my mind. Whatever. I think that's cool. cool. I guess my question is, can we... I like that she has no mirrors. I think that's cool. Yeah. I think we should call out that there are literally no yep. mirrors in the No house. mirrors anywhere. And now, yeah. you wouldn't normally have mirrors necessarily yeah. anywhere but, a bathroom. A sh- but you but would in a bathroom but we're in the bathroom and we should see noticeably yes. either the mirror ha- is not there or if she's been just taken like, or it's been taken like the whole medicine cabinet has been well, a piece of newspaper taped over it yes it's covered up something right. like that cool, cool, cool. um let's go back to here charlise gets in so noticeably yeah the, the I, yeah, I think I think calling out that it's covered over with something 
I think is the I think is the better version of it, rather than it's just not there. Sorry, calling out the yeah. absolute, you know, I think it, but if it's like you're calling out that it's being covered up, then I go, oh, what's going on here? You right. might think that she's a vampire, you know. Um yes. Yeah. That's that's exactly what's yeah. written. Um the and we just obviously like we had asked this before. Well, what if there's a mirror in the diner? We just aren't going to have a mirror in the just, diner. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. fucking matter. Um, and and here's my other question though about these mirrors. Um, if we if, and I, and I'm down using this whole idea of the mirrors because I think it's cool. Yeah. Um, and I like that it's vampire mythology. It's not all vampire mythology, no, so why sure. can't it also be demonic mythology? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But can what do other people see? Yeah, I think other people are only ever going to see her the way she is. I think the reflections, and I go, and I think that in the okay. in the opening, it slightly it slightly bumps it, but I don't have a massive problem with it. I think it's that she doesn't want to be reminded of what she looks like. Two other demons. Well, when a demon looks at another demon, they see a demon. And we, the audience, can see it. Fine. fine. It, other other character, other human characters yes, just yes. don't see it. But yeah. but I guess here's the question about that. Are they capable of revealing their form to people? Maybe yes. Because I do want so there's because yes. there's two things. One, I do want to have her be revealed to Sam as what she truly is. Okay, so could it be you know, ugliness. I want Sam yeah. to see her ugliness. You, you know? okay, so in order to present that to the world, it takes a certain amount of mental energy. If you get distracted or something happens to you momentarily, you might let that mental energy slip before you can redo mm. the quote unquote spell that sure. makes that. So if you were to get smacked down, might you come back up being demon form before you shake back into your human form? Mm. Perhaps. All right. Well, at this moment, I'm going to create... Um, a note because yes. we are at the post one we hour are, absolutely. and i'm gonna say demons look like dark Darth Maul. Yes. Um, they cool. can be seen by us and them yes in mirrors. and again like so say for example we're in this wall i'm seeing it in walgreens she might look down, she might look down the aisle and see some guy just like fucking knocking cans of fucking tinned pasta off the wall. And is but the camera would move, and, and this might be one of these moments where you call out a camera movement. The camera moves behind her, and as it comes behind her, we see what she sees, and then we would see that it's actually a demon. <laughs> well, like like you would shift from non-her POV to her POV. You know, and go. Oh, hang on a minute! Demons can look like us. <laughs> yeah, something yeah. like that. Anyway. Yeah. Um, perhaps. 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 Yeah. Perhaps. There's a, a, another question that I think I'd like to answer, which is: Can they sense each other's presence? If he, if we, if she can sense this, if this demonic energy has just hit her like a shock wave, is, yeah, maybe that's all. Demons have demonic energy yeah okay so again is that how hank is able to track them yeah you know yeah he's got a demonic energy yeah sure power. okay yeah she's got a spy she's got a demonic spidey sense great well we'll crack this scene we'll jump straight back into this tomorrow good stuff today we didn't massively push things forward, but we did get that all cleaned up right there we so finished think... the restructuring i think yes. it makes it a lot better absolutely right cool Sounds good. great stuff all right thank you so much dude all right, all right. Well, thanks um, everybody yes see you all right uh, see you next time see you tomorrow bye, bye, bye.